I'm no good at all at getting people off the phone. I'm terrible at doing that transition thing, where you subtly indicate that although, of course, my true pleasure would be if this call could simply go on all day and long into the night, to be ended only when one of us falls asleep or dies of starvation. Nonetheless, in this imperfect world of ours, perhaps we should... What's more, I find whenever I do try to wind up a call, even if it's been a really long one, the other person usually injects that rather martyred tone of, oh, oh no, fine, I must let you get on. Even if I try to make it as clear as possible that I was busy when they called, that I was on a roller coaster or my other arm was on fire, that it was a mark of massive respect to them that I answered at all under such circumstances. Nonetheless, I put the phone down feeling guilty. I mean, I picked it up feeling guilty, I feel perpetually guilty, but I put it down feeling guiltier. But I flatter myself that when I ring someone up and they answer saying they're really busy and can't really talk, I do try very hard to be brief and let them off the hook, or let the phone back on the hook, with the greatest possible dispatch and without a judgmental tone of voice. But maybe my attempts to sound upbeat and positive about the foreshortened conversation ring in their ears as martyred and disappointed. That my very effort at positivity makes it sound hollow. It may be that it's impossible to cut a phone call short without feeling judged, even if you haven't been. You feel as if they've cooked you dinner and halfway through you've got up and wandered off to the pub. Perhaps this is the problem that a phone conversation isn't going round for dinner, nor, for that matter, is it going out to the pub. Both of those things are, of course, basically just mechanisms to allow conversation to happen. But we need the dinner to eat or the beer to drink to make that feel normal. And it's not just about alcohol making people voluble. All our social meetings evolve some sort of fig leaf of catering and refreshment. Obviously, going for a coffee with someone is about the chat, not the coffee. But it would be weird without the coffee. And that's what a chat on the phone is. It's chat without the coffee. Even if you happen to be drinking coffee at the time, it's still pure chat, unadulterated chat. Just your voice, their voice, and a couple of hundred miles of wire or a lump of metal in space. It's as if dating was reduced down to two people walking to a room naked and giving each other marks out of a hundred. Telephone chatting should really be considered a special professional grade of chat, only to be attempted by hardened chatters who can prove they haven't experienced an awkward silence or a clumsy segue in their last thousand hours of chat. Into which group I, of course, emphatically do not fall. So, anyway, that's, uh, that's probably more or less all I have to say this week. I mean, unless you... No? Sure? Well, OK, really, really good to talk to you, though. See you next week. Bye for now. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.